Okay, hello everybody. Welcome to today's event. I'm Jason Gumper from MS Dynamics World, and I'm joined by Greg Pierce, Chief Cloud Officer at Concerto Cloud Services, for a session today on uh, when to make the move to Dynamics AX7, aka Dynamics 365 for operations. Uh, it's great to welcome Greg back, and uh, as we get started, please know that you can ask uh, your questions at any point throughout today's presentation. I know Greg will be making some time at the end to answer any of those. Uh, you can look for the Q&A block. You should see to the right of the main presentation area uh, for uh, for your uh, place to enter questions. So uh, without any further delay, please allow me to welcome Greg Pierce to start things off. Thank you, Jason, and uh, glad to be here. Uh, for those of you who uh, may not know, we actually scheduled this a webcast for a couple weeks back and, and had to move it. And what a fortunate thing it was that we did move it because, you know, as uh, as luck would have it, uh, AX7 really no longer exists and has become Dynamics 365. Uh, Microsoft had announced that in the middle of October and then formally launched it uh, on November 1st. So things have changed at a dizzying pace and uh, and now we have uh, completely different options open than, than we used to have. So what's going on with uh, AX? Uh, you know, there's there's been a lot of different zigs and zags in the uh, in the the uh, roadmap for AX, and the current iteration is in Dynamics 365. Now, Dynamics 365 breaks down into a few different components. There's what's called Dynamics 365 Business, uh, which is an SMB offering for ERP, and uh, it is um, really tied to what was called before that Madeira, uh, which is Microsoft's NAV product. Um, it's for really smaller implementations uh, of uh, ERP and uh, have not, uh, I think, gotten to the point where all the components are included. Um, some of them are coming. Uh, early next year, uh, but the offering that ties around AX, what AX7 has become is Dynamics 365. And Dynamics 365 Enterprise Edition, um, Plan 2 is what it's called, includes AX uh, and CRM, uh, and that is the, the future model. Uh, there's still the availability of AX 2012 for those who have need for a complete on-premise solution. Um, though there are some on-premise components, I'll talk about those in a little bit. Um, we're going to also talk about uh, today the role of the partner uh, that you have coming and um, things really uh, that uh, are gating items right now for some companies that want to uh, implement, um, but there's just reasons that they can't. So what's going on in the cloud market? It's probably <laughs> be a good place to start. and. Uh, most most of the stats you look at, if you look at Gartner, if you look at 451 Research, if you look at IDC, um, they're predicting that um, cloud spend is going to increase uh, 100% or double uh, within the next two years. And when you think about the offerings that are in the marketplace, there's very few companies that have net new solutions that are software <coughs> that have built those or are building those for on-premise. Um, what they're doing is they're building them uh, for cloud, and cloud is becoming the prevalent deployment model. Uh, matter of fact, uh, amongst new implementations, uh, it is the most prevalent uh, deployment model. Uh, some of the things that changed, I think, to help get us there uh, was, one, uh, the ability to have better security. Uh, two, uh, maturity within the cloud market to be able to provide uh, higher levels of uptime, uh, performance and to be able to give customers the control that they require as well. So with that as a backdrop and thinking about how line of business applications are certainly making the shift from on-premise to cloud, you know, I think it's important to look at what's going on um, specifically with the AX application and um, what the roadmap looks like uh, from the past and into the future. Now, um, Dynamics 365 
Um, also still includes the ability, you can deploy AX2012 if you need to for on-premise. And Dynamics 365 has some on-premise components that tie to it. Um, and also wraps around it things that are important for uh, implementations that are a little more complex, like uh, third parties and ISVs. And uh, we'll dig into that in just a little bit here. So Dynamics 365 really uh, is a web-based application, and it is running out of Microsoft Azure. Uh, there's no plan for Microsoft to release a full-blown uh, on-premise on version uh, of Dynamics 365. And one of the things that is very interesting uh, for uh, this iteration is a not only a consumption model of, you know, per user pricing, which is uh, a fairly common way to go, but also a consumption model based on use only what, or pay for only what you use. So if you just need, uh, let's say, uh, supply chain management, or if you just needed um, portions that tie to core financials, you don't have to purchase all the different pieces. You can um, purchase them a la carte. Uh, what's also been built into Dynamics 365, which uh, right now is nascent, but um, will become, I think, quite the uh, differentiator and something that businesses will adopt significantly uh, is uh, analytics in Cortana and uh, business intelligence. And I think as Dynamics 365 starts to gain critical mass, what you'll see are customers that are able to get their own uh, benefit for their business within that uh, business analytics, but also to start leveraging what other companies uh, see as best practices and what they've learned as well. So there's a couple things that also tie into Dynamics 365 that I think are um, extraordinarily uh, important. And uh, one of them is this idea of the common data platform. Um, so working in CRM or AX or within the business uh, uh, version um, has the same core code, uh, if you will. So what that allows is for um, ISVs to be able to create uh, connectors and in some cases uh, com complete um, p packages of code that can be overlaid uh, onto the programs. And that's what AppSource is all about. If you haven't heard about AppSource, uh, it's a, a very interesting uh, deployment model where uh, if you were deploying AX, let's say, in Dynamics 365, uh, there are going to be several uh, ISVs, uh, ones that don't require separate databases, that you could go in and you can um, overlay into your implementation uh, fairly seamlessly without a long implementation cycle. So what's being created ahead of time is a templated approach to add those ISVs. Uh, there's already, um, I think, upward, upwards of 50 ISV, <laughs> ISVs that are in app source, and I think you can expect to continue to see that grow. Uh, another part, I think, that is very important for Dynamics 365 is the ability to connect in to Office 365 and uh, the rich integration with not only the uh, Office products like Excel and Microsoft Word, uh, but the ability to have true integration um, at an exchange level uh, where right within your Outlook client, uh, you can go and edit an invoice, for example, and it will pull it up um, out of Dynamics 365, your, out of your general ledger. Um, if you're changing a sales order, you know, it's the same sort of process. So it really turns what uh, is a, kind of a secret for all of us that we use Microsoft Outlook as um, probably a 70% of our productivity is there. Um, it adds all those components where you don't have to jump out of it and go to a ERP system uh, to be able to get information uh, changed or information to a customer, which we see as extraordinarily uh, powerful. Um, of course, that's going to continue to grow as um, Cortana and the Power BI pieces uh, continue to, to become uh, more and more relevant and have more information tied into them. So really, the end-to-end -end of the Enterprise Edition um, has 
you know, the application platform with the uh, BI uh, embedded. It has um, Power Apps and the common data model um, running on top of Azure. Uh, and then you add in different components. So there's sales, there's field service, there's marketing, uh, customer service, there's uh, project automation and uh, operations. Uh, all of that is either tied together or you can consume those a la carte, which is pretty neat. You can even um, tie them into other systems as need be. Uh, and then that will tie into the ISVs uh, that are uh, ones that I think customers have used in the past and will continue to use. Now, there's some nuances to how the ISVs uh, would be connected with and, and how you would approach that, um, but we'll jump into that in, in just a second. So uh, those of you who have questions on App Source, uh, it really is, uh, uh, I think, revolutionary for the way that AX is deployed. In the past, uh, the way that you would deploy it is um, start configuring and um, put forward uh, the core application, and you would have ISVs that you would determine you needed based on perhaps, I don't know, um, uh, sales automation, uh, maybe enterprise content management that needed to be added, uh, you know, payroll system, you name it. Uh, and those things would have to be written and the integrations be written. And then you're responsible to have to have an implementation of the uh, uh, ISV uh, that you support it. And uh, in some cases that created this uh, maybe disjointed solution or a solution that was a little bit more difficult uh, to operationally maintain. Um, AppSource is really the effort to bring all of that together and to make the applications much more seamless and much uh, with a higher degree of integration uh, into the core Dynamics AX or Dynamics 365, sorry, uh, I'll, I'll keep making that mistake for probably another couple months anyway, uh, but to, to integrate it into the core pieces of Dynamics 365. Um, you'll see connectors in there. You're going to see um, enhanced security packages in there. Uh, you'll see uh, full uh, pieces of code that can overlay and create a system that maybe gets a company closer to 80% of the way there before you even have to start um, configuring and doing uh, a lot of the functional design. So let's dig into the uh, availability for on-premise. Uh, there's been uh, a few different announcements that have come from an on-premise perspective. Uh, the, the original uh, release of AX7 was in uh, uh, April of this year. And when it was released, it was released with the understanding that there would be a version that would run on Azure Stack, uh, which would be released later uh, in the year uh, of this year. Uh, Azure Stack is actually the software and code that Microsoft has to run Azure, uh, but you can run it in your own data center, uh, which is an interesting concept. Uh, the, the long and short of it is that Azure Stack got pushed back uh, and is not scheduled to be released till the end of, uh, of summer next year or in mid-fall. So um, it's going to be quite some time before Azure Stack's ready. But uh, the, the roadmap for AX changed in the process. And Dynamics 365 uh, doesn't have a, uh, a futures roadmap that has a, an on-premise piece per se. Um, there's dual rights, and you will hear of um, on-premise implementations. But the on-premise parts are for uh, a few different reasons. One would be a global deployment where you need a localized copy, uh, say, in Germany. Another would be if you have uh, a retail establishment and you uh, can't uh, have the scenario where perhaps connection to the public cloud is down, so you have an on-premise piece for the point of sale system at the brick and mortar store. Or it could be for a shop floor where uh, you have to have a <laughs> localized connection to the printer. Um, so you'll actually have a localized copy uh, of the Dynamics 365, but the, the system of record 
or the one that is the master with the actual database in where uh, the, the truth lies is going to still be in Azure. Um, so it all connects back up to the Dynamics 365 instance that, that's in Azure. Um, so in that case, um, synchronization will be absolutely key because you'll need to be able to connect back and forth. Uh, and I think you'll see um, for things that are super mission critical, or actually not even super mission critical, just mi more mission critical than you get out of the box with Dynamics 365, which is a 99.5, uh, uh, that it is um, going to be able to cover uh, what you need and be able to make sure uh, that you can operate in case there's any kind of lost connectivity um, to the Azure Cloud. So the interesting thing I think that uh, that cascades off of that is uh, many of you have bought, uh, or if you have AX, you bought it off of uh, enterprise agreement and probably bought licenses. And the future of it uh, is really in a subscription model. So it'll be bought um, on a uh, monthly uh, type consumption basis or within an EA, uh, but it is based on um, uh, the pieces that you want, so the apps that you want, and then also the roles that your team members uh, that connect have. So, uh, you know, we went over the apps before the areas, but really it falls into operations and sales, uh, field service, uh, customer service, and then the roles tie to operations or sales or field service, customer service, but really um, tie into whether you need to go in and change data or whether you need to be able to just look at data, uh, whether you need to be able to um, access from anywhere in the world or whether it's something um, where every once in a while um, you're connecting up to uh, get into the system. So it's, um, it, it's really personalized. Uh, for the for, for the roles that you see out in the marketplace today, and the nice thing about it is it's it's set up so that you can um, grow as you need, and you can also shrink. Uh, the one part that uh, adds a little complexity to the pricing model uh, is that uh, there's also uh, uh, charges for development environments and test environments. Uh, and some, you know, training environments if you require that. And there's also extra uh, charges for uh, storage that you would uh, have to uh, consume in order for your instance to work properly. I think that uh, probably most of you on the call are, are customers or interested in AX for your company, but it's important to understand what the uh, partner uh, uh, changes look like, I think, going forward. And um, I think for sure what you're going to end up seeing is an evolution of the partner because as the uh, Dynamics 365 is more heavily tied into Office 365 and tied to specific ISVs, um, a lot of what has been done in the past in different silos, so even telephony, you know, with, with the ERPR document management, um, all becomes part of the same offering, and all of it tied together, and there needs to be an understanding of the complexity and certainly uh, an ability uh, to be able to handle it uh, on, a, on a regular basis. So, you know, the long and short of it is I think that you're going to see Dynamics partners start to expand their offerings to be able to take care of and to be able to implement all of the different pieces that can tie together so that their customers can take advantage of all the great things that Microsoft has put into Dynamics 365. There's another role for your uh, partner as well going forward, and that is um, if you uh, uh, engage with the partner to deploy Dynamics 365, uh, the partner is going to be responsible for billing and subscription support, uh, for provisioning and deployment help, uh, software configuration, um, performance issues, uh, any service availability issues, connectivity problems, um, desktop problems that may happen because of misconfigured settings and so forth, um, updates and uh, for services and so forth, uh, manage, management of really the development environments and in some cases to uh, ensure that the code within the development environments is properly uh, implemented. 
uh, and really the 24-7 uh, footprint. Um, so uh, there, there's Dynamics partners that have embraced cloud and have moved fast in cloud. There's a, there's a good number of them. And then there's some that uh, had not. And the ones that had not, I think, are going to um, uh, change quickly and move up stack to be able to provide these services for their customers. Uh, the ones that have been in place for a while, this is old hat. And this is uh, really uh, being able to support uh, the pieces that tie to a cloud implementation so they're used to it. But um, there is a role for your partner on an ongoing basis uh, that uh, is, is maybe like a, a buffer and an extra support layer uh, between your instance of Dynamics 365 uh, and, uh, and your implementation, or I'm sorry, your, your uh, on-premise piece. Um, one of the additional roles of the CSP is going to be uh, to be able to present and implement uh, the right uh, ISVs that would tie into Dynamics 365. And there are many, many of the ISVs that require a separate database. And those separate databases are going to have to be set up um, in a completely separate uh, model uh, and then connected into Dynamics 365. So you'll have connectors in place and so forth. You know, one of the things that we are doing um, is already working with ISVs that are customers of ours to build out this ISV cloud and to be able to um, really have uh, the implementation set up and ready to go um, to tie into Dynamics 365 and have it Azure-based uh, uh, to be able to have the, the continuity. There's a couple questions that came in. I'm going to go ahead and uh, address them as they're, they're going. Um, one was, uh, is there a minimum number of licenses uh, to start? Um, as of right now, the minimum number of licenses is 50 for uh, Dynamics 365 Enterprise uh, Plan 2. Uh, I, I think that that will change, and it will change downward, uh, where you'll be able to have a lower barrier to entry, and uh, it, it may have already uh, it may already be in the works to change it, uh, but that's the barrier right there. And then another question was, what are your customers saying about ability to CapEx the cost uh, as AX moves to subscription license? You know, it, there's, uh, it, it's a good question. There's, there's a subset of customers that like the idea of making this just an operational cost going forward. Um, but there are uh, certainly customers that prefer the CapEx model. Uh, in some cases, they're tied to private equity groups or um, have um, an investment type scenario. And, uh, you know, they don't like it as much. But uh, I, I don't know that there is uh, much of an option there, except uh, there is still the ability to deploy um, AX 2012. And there are a lot of companies that are, that are going down that road uh, and doing that now. So there's some um, gating items. By gating items, I mean things that uh, are... Um, still not completely buttoned up that uh, um, are probably okay for some customers, but for some um, are not. Um, security is one of those. Uh, the security uh, within Dynamics 365 is a work in process, so um, they're going to continue to add compliances um, uh, and go, going forward. And as that uh, uh, compliance piece continues to uh, evolve, I think it'll become more and more palatable to companies. But as of right now, there, there's really not the uh, HIPAA compliance or um, ITAR or uh, PCI type compliances in place. Um, as they're built out, they'll become more uh, more of something that is not a barrier, but they are right now. Um, global deployments uh, become a little bit of a barrier and a little bit more difficult uh, because uh, there are components that are uh, in some cases need localization. Um, that piece is coming with the on-premise piece. Um, there's uh, uh, a couple of questions that came in, and I'll address those in a second. Let me get through the, the slide. Um, and one of them is the size of the deployment. Uh, so um, right now it is um, 50 users, but um, I expect that to get much smaller uh, as we move forward. Um, the service level agreement that you get uh, for Dynamics 365 
is a 3.9, which is okay for some, but um, for many that doesn't quite uh, match the requirements. And as a matter of fact, I think it's 99.5 for the uh, business edition um, in, uh, in Dynamics 365. Uh, because it's a new product, there's still some functionality gaps, though uh, I have been very impressed with the amount they were able to get into uh, this initial release. Um, one of the uh, questions is, uh, you know, is Microsoft adding compliance to security? What does it mean? Uh, they are going to be adding uh, compliance pieces. Um, what that will mean is this. Uh, right now, if you have a requirement that your ERP system has to be PCI compliant, um, you're going to need to wait before you move to Dynamics 365. Uh, I think that you'll see the compliance pieces added, not in years, but in months. And uh, I know that they're already working towards it. Um, so I wouldn't see it as a, uh, a long-term gating item, but it certainly is a gating item right now. There's a, uh, an AX customer uh, that is in our cloud, uh, and uh, you know, he was talking about uh, moving out to the cloud and that uh, in some cases, or in his case, uh, the number one objector in the group that he really needed to work with most uh, so was, uh, was his own internal IT department. And uh, he said, you know, it's easier to get on the train than it is to stand in the tracks with your uh, hand in the air trying to stop it. And I think that that is a good lesson for all of us. You know, whether we like it or not, uh, the, the whole um, uh, idea of cloud has become the primary deployment model. So I would start looking at what you have from a cloud perspective now. And I would also start looking at moving to the cloud right now. Whether you go to Dynamics 365 or not, you can start moving your workloads um, even older versions of AX, 2009 or 2012, out to the cloud um, and start getting yourself prepared and get yourself uh, to an understanding level uh, from a cloud perspective. So this is a, a little bit about us. Uh, we have uh, worked with Microsoft for a very long time. Uh, we work in the uh, Azure space. We also have a uh, private cloud deployment, which allows, uh, in some cases, uh, for customers more control uh, ability and uh, uh, some performance uh, and compliance type uh, benefits as well. Uh, but we also deploy uh, within Azure. And oftentimes what we find is the best deployments are deployments that tie across um, uh, multiple cloud platforms. So it's a multi-cloud uh, implementation. The multi-cloud implementation is really tied to uh, Azure and uh, VPC. So let's. Um, th there's another question here about uh, how Dynamics uh, CRM fits into Dynamics 365. Uh, when you get the Enterprise Plan 2, it's no longer a, a, optional on CRM. You're going to get it. It comes with it. Um, so Dynamic CRM uh, has the same functionality that you've seen in the past with CRM Online, uh, but it is now um, really bundled with AX in that Enterprise Plan 2. The Enterprise Plan 1 is uh, CRM without uh, the, the AX piece tied into it. In Tanya, if there's other questions, I'm, I'm happy to open it to uh, questions now. I think I was going to do 30 minutes, and then uh, let's see if anybody has any any questions. All right, so somebody's asking, uh, to reconfirm AX 2012, R3 will be the last on-premise version. Hybrid AX, as you described, will have on-premise components allow you to run for a period of time in a disconnected mode, but you would not be able to run disconnected indefinitely. Um, James, uh, yeah, that, that sounds right. Look, I don't want anybody to go away saying there's no on-premise because um, Microsoft slash uh, your partners are going to call the components that run um, on the on-prem part um, on-premise. 
Um, but really, the, the, it's not built to be disconnected, and you can just run on premise, uh, and off you go. Um, it is going to be connected up to Azure, and Azure is going to be the system of record. And the Dynamics 365 piece within Azure um, is going to be where you're going to have to do um, your main updates, business, code deployments, and so forth. Uh, there's another question here. Uh, is the CRM and AX all-in-one integration available now? Uh, it is. Uh, it's called, and that, that is what the Dynamics 365 Enterprise Plan 2 is, is uh, CRM and AX in one integration. Uh, one, uh, will code modifications be supported in Dynamics 365? Um, it is, but uh, to a certain level. So the uh, common data model is set up so that uh, really, um, you know, it, it's almost like think about uh, your app store that you have uh, if you have an iPhone. Um, the uh, iPhone is really connected um, to uh, the uh, uh, really a, a QA process that creates for um, the, the customer uh, an application that just works. And that's what Microsoft is trying to accomplish here. So there will be some limits on the ability to customize um, down deep into the database. Um, another question is, we run AX2012 today. Will we move to Dynamics 365 Plan 1? Uh, no, it would be Dynamics 365 Plan 2 because um, Plan 2 is uh, with AX. And then you would have to determine which components of it you would be looking at. Have I heard of any performance concerns for customers already live on Azure? Um, you know, I've heard of some customers that had uh, uh, performance concerns for sure. Uh, it, you know, it's been released since April. So the reality is there's not a ton of production-ready systems. It takes a little while to deploy AX, though there are some. Um, and also I've uh, heard, heard of um, issues where uh, um, or, or some customers where they haven't had any kind of uh, performance issues or, or they're okay. And I think really you, you have to, it's a new product. Uh, Microsoft's done a great job creating it, but you have to look at it as uh, if you have a pretty uh, vanilla slash not, su not super complex implementation, um, then probably it seems okay. Um, if it's more complex, you have a lot of integration points, uh, and, uh, you, you know, you're processing a lot of transactions, I'd really dig in and you know, make sure that it's ready uh, for uh, what you need to get uh, accomplished. So um, another question was, how does pricing work for non-production environments such as test and development? Uh, I don't have the exact numbers. Uh, I think that's from um, uh, Mr. Constantine. But, uh, I don't have the exact numbers, but um, it is a uh, per environment um, uh, cost, um, and I, it's several thousand dollars per development environment. Um, we do have that information, so if you can reach out to us after, um, we can certainly help you uh, get that information. Do we have any other questions? Jason or Tanya, any other question questions? about uh, there is a question about functionality being rolled out um, automatically uh, in, in on Azure. Yes, yeah, so um, one of the items that is uh, supposed to be part of the future release is the ability to uh, decide not to accept uh, the release of uh, new code, so your so your instance wouldn't break, um, as it were. And there's a question, I apologize if you, if you got this one, but uh, on code modifications being supported in uh, Dynamics 365? Yeah, I think I hit that one, but code modifications are supported to a point. Um, there certainly are, um, you know, deeper in the database type scenarios where uh, you're not going to be able to make changes. Uh, it's, uh, it, it's just, you're, you're not going to be able to make the same, you don't have the same level of control or change ability as you have on the on-premise version. <laughs> I 
And there there's a question on uh, moving. Uh, there is a question on moving up from AX twenty twelve. I think it might be a little bit of a uh, maybe a version nomenclature a misunderstanding on that one. It says we're on AX twenty twelve. Should we move up first and then move up to Dynamics three sixty five or straight to Dynamics three sixty five? If you're on twenty twelve, uh, you would. Yeah, if you're on 2012, you would be able to go to uh, Dynamics 365 uh, Direct. Probably the one that is more uh, interesting is 2009, um, which also has a migration path uh, to Dynamics 365. Um, AX 2009 goes um, end of life in, uh, uh, I believe it is middle of 2018. So in other words, no more uh, support for it. And uh, probably those of you on 2009 will be trying to determine whether 2012 makes sense for you um, or, or, or to leapfrog that and go directly to E365 based on some of the um, gaps that I had uh, talked about earlier. Well, why don't we make a final call for questions here? I'm not seeing any others at this time. Um, and others, well, no, I say that and a couple others have come in. <laughs> um, so, you, do you want do you want to t take your pick, Greg, or you want me to sort these up for you? Um, let me let um, me look. Let's see, um, okay. how does? Yeah, you go ahead and team up for me if you don't mind. Okay, so um, uh, any idea on the sunset timeline for AX twenty twelve? Yeah, you know what? I do know. Um, I think it is uh, twenty twenty if I'm not mistaken. That sounds right, or 2021 maybe. Yeah, yeah, um, yeah um, somebody's then, asking about, yeah, I think, I think it was 2020 um, for it to go end of life, and uh, I put an asterisk next to it. Oftentimes, uh, products get um, uh, uh, stays of execution and years added to their lives, um, depending upon, in the ERP, to me, seems like it'd be sensible to do that, perhaps. Um, the uh, One of them is a question on Solomon. So this is more of an AX slant, uh, but, um, but yeah, we have a lot of information on, on SL. Um, SL and GP and NAV um, are going to continue, and they're going to continue with on-premise versions that, uh, that you can run in cloud as well, and um, we, we do cloud for SL, GP, NAV. And uh, it, it, there's no end of life for SL right now. I don't know about individual versions, though. Did I hit all the questions here, Jason? Um, so one person asks, "What's the needed? Um, what's needed on site, or I guess, how would you handle the scenario on site?" if the cloud connection went down and you needed to keep running? I assume in the context of Dynamics 365. Yeah, what you would have is an on-premise implementation uh, that would be able to support it. <laughs> and um, I don't have the uh, technical requirements for that right now um, on, on the top of my head, but we can get that for you if you reach out to us after the, uh, after the webcast. Um, Lynn, have you, what have you heard regarding uh, data migration tools for moving historical data from 2009 to AX7? Um, so I haven't heard of any uh, data migration tools to move uh, historical data, uh, but there certainly um, could be some out there. Uh, I think that, uh, um, you know, it's the product was released three days ago. So I think that there will be, um, we're in the process of actually building some tools to do that for um, 2009. And uh, I'm sure we won't be the only ones doing that. Uh, you just may have to wait a little bit, um, James, on, on that one. All right, we do appear to be through those questions and also some good feedback. I'm glad people are uh, yeah, appreciating the, uh, the information here today. Yeah, uh, based if you do have any other questions, questions, if we don't get to, yeah, sorry, Greg, go ahead. I was going to say, Jason, based on the we should probably talk about this afterwards, but uh, based on the questions, I think that it may make sense to uh, run this webinar again at some point. For sure. Um, 
And if we did miss anything, we will get a chance to kind of review all the questions that have been coming in. They've been coming in at quite a good pace. Uh, we'll review them again afterwards. In case we missed anybody's, uh, we can definitely follow up with you uh, with an answer. Uh, I do want to be, uh, yeah, and we are recording today's event, so that'll be available for you to to check in, to check and to uh, to potentially share if you if you want to make sure other people see it as well. We'll be sharing details on how you'll be able to access that. Uh, I want to remind folks there's also a survey uh, that should pop up after we close out. It has just a few questions. It should only take 20 seconds or so to to complete. We would really appreciate any feedback on on your experience today and uh, what you thought of this event. Uh, we appreciate it on our side, and our, our presenters always do as well. Uh, well, we'll start wrapping up. Uh, Greg, thanks again for joining us and for uh, for taking us through so much good information today. Thank you, Jason. Always always glad to uh, to to work with you guys. All right, and uh, we will end things there. Thanks everyone for the questions and for the participation, and uh, have a good weekend. And that concludes today's event. All right. Thanks again.